Hello friends, Big Stupid Grin here. Felt like getting a game in before work, so let's go ahead and check that out. All right, planes, white pieces. Let's see how they react to E4. Uh, they're going to play E5. Very good. Let's see how far into the uh, Italian game we get into. I mean, you will see a Stafford. Kind of remember how to stop the Stafford. Okay. Um, e4. I think we can still play, or d6 rather. I think this is a Philidor. I think we can still develop normally. Uh, we can develop with a check here, do the Roy Lopez stuff. Probably make them move a pawn. Um, other than that, I don't think it's going to do much. But we can move the bishop back. They can develop. No, they can develop their bishop and blocks. I'm not sure that's super valuable. So let's just play the Italian bishop here, c4. Then if we put a pawn here, we'll have a defender. So we could try d4 here. Um... Okay, we have h6. So again, that seems fine to me. d4, see if they take. Um, are we going to take? Probably they take back. Okay, so if we take and they take back, we can trade off queens. fine to me. I wonder if they're doing like a hippo or crab or some kind of weird opening here. So yeah, we'll do this. Take on e5. Need to play a little bit faster, <laughs> but I want to, you know, record. So. so if they take, they don't take, they threaten my bishop. That's interesting. Um, what do we want this bishop? We could put him here. That seems perfectly fine if we want to control that diagonal. Yeah, it works for me. All right. Um, do I want to exchange bishops? I kind of have to, which is fine. Okay. All right, do we want to take back? Um, might as well, it does put the queen onto me, which is annoying. So maybe we keep the tension even though these are doubled pawns. Um, we can just castle here. We can play a knight move. Um, yeah, because if I take, they could take here. Actually, they wouldn't take here. If I take and they take. You can also take and develop their bishop to that spot, which I think would be okay. Um, just develop a knight. Bishop doesn't have anywhere to go quite yet. Our dark squared bishop. So let's just let me calculate that one more time. They have two attackers. And I have no defender, so it's an exchange here. If I do that, gets rid of a doubled over pawn, so I think that's okay. There's no doubled attack or anything here. All right, let's go ahead and take and see how they want to play it. Do you want to castle? Our priorities are castling and getting the knight moved. Um, this is actually an excellent outpost here, e5 for the knight. It's not easily attacked. Well, now it's easily attacked, but you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, let's just... Does kicking out the queen make any sense? No, because they have a pawn right there. Um, let's just develop a knight and then we'll castle. And I think I'm doing okay. I'm up a pawn. Okay, they're going to kick the knight. Where do I want to move this guy? Um, that seems kind of bad. Knight here doesn't 
block anything. So let's go knight to e2. Uh, yeah, I don't want to de uh, undevelop him. That's what I meant to say. All right, so they have they don't have too many scary looking attacks. They're just advancing all of their pawns. They have three pawn islands, or I have two big ones. Um, don't want to get overconfident, of course. Okay. So, what if we advance this pawn? If they take, I can still do this. Um, they have a decent outpost on this square, if I let them have it. I think this is okay. Yeah, let's play that. Still want a castle. If I say that enough times, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested. Okay. So we're attacking the F pawn. Um, I think if we castle, we're fine. There's not really a follow-up attack here. Uh, sanity check. Again, most of their good pieces are blocked off. Um, we could take. If we take, we lose our castling rights if they want to give up a horse. Actually, taking it puts a bishop up here. Not sure if that's good. Um, we need to... If this knight moves, we need to take here. I think I'm just going to castle and be able, try to be solid. I don't think this knight really... Knight can attack this pawn, I suppose. And I don't think this is scary yet. But we do have to remember... I think I've been removing my own attackers sometimes. Um, my queen does have... A defender now with this pawn with this rook, so it's not too bad if they go, you know, queen exchanging on their end. Okay. So now they are looking to go attack this. Um we can just take. If they go crazy here, I can just take with the rook. I can try to kick the knight and force the issue. Um, I could block with my own queen, and I'd be fine with that exchange. Um, they don't have any other pieces to coordinate with this, so I'm kind of okay with this. I mean, if they take, I get a knight. Um, in the center. So that's fine. Assuming I didn't just fork myself. <laughs> I am down a little bit on time, so if, if I see any obvious moves, I need to take it. But, you know, do the sanity check. Can't take there. <laughs> Those bishops will get you. Um, what's the home of this dark square bishop? We might do a fianchetto. Um, we could move him here. We could just get him out of the way so the rooks can get connected. Okay, and we're going to exchange. It's fine by me. It kind of removes the threat. And then they're going to win the pawn. But I, I'm kind of okay with that. Um, let's see how we want to play this. So they take back. 
could take this pawn and attack their bishop. But what do they get out of that? Not sure. Um, we have a fork here. If we go knight knight, but they can just exchange off that way. Um, I think this is fine. So definitely a wild game. <laughs> the structure looks pretty weird. Um, we can start getting our rook into the game that's on the open file. That's probably my next priority. Um, we just have a dark square bishop. We lost the bishop pair, but our opponent doesn't have the bishop pair either. Um, OK. Um, what do we want to do about that? We could check and win another pawn. Uh, we can move our rook anyway. Uh, bishop isn't hurting anything quite yet. So let's formally deny their ability to castle, not that it really matters. And we'll be up a couple of pawns. We have uh, obviously a much safer king. Yeah, I'll move the king there, and then we can fork. Not really a fork, but a pseudo fork here. Um, any better moves? I don't see any better moves. So let's just do this. I don't think I'm going to exchange a knight for a pawn. But we keep the knight in a pretty good outpost. Probably a pretty good outpost. And the king could chase it around, I guess. My dark square bishop is looking over here, but he has two defenders. Uh, do I want to exchange a knight for a bishop? Seems like a wide open game. So I think this is fine. Yeah, it's an open game. And then we can start doing checks here. OK. Um, next item, we need to get this pawn, this uh, bishop sorted. Uh, we could go for a fianchetto. That might be too uh, slow. Is there anywhere on this diagonal I want the bishop, though? We can move him here, but that blocks the rook. Um, again, this is kind of a slow move, but I think it's okay. I like this diagonal because the rook's on it, but as soon as the rook moves, it's still attacking this pawn. Um, just to make sure... Yeah, I bet the engine won't like this move. It does block their uh, furthest advanced pawn, so I guess that's okay. All right, they're going to kick the knight. Um, if we check, it can move closer. Um, but this knight is uh, protected, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, we can move this bishop. And then a little in-betweener. Um, is Rook worth them slicing into our position, though? Probably not. Let's just be safe, I think. Unless this is a, a trapped piece now. Uh, it still has this home. So I think it's okay. If it didn't have this square, we'd be in trouble. 
But still want to move this here, connect the rooks. Um, possibly, if we can get a rook battery, then we can attack the seventh rank, sort of. Uh, let's go here with the bishop. We can win the rook if they don't move their king next. Okay. Um, I can still win their rook, though. Yeah, this works for me. All right, and we're okay with losing our knight here. All right, so... Now what? I think rook to d8 is fine. Um, sanity check. We could just put the rook here. I don't think that helps. It might be our next rook's position. Um, nothing too fantastic we can do with that bishop yet. We should probably retreat it at some point. Here, we're paying this knight to the rook. I think that's worth it. King can move here. Uh, I can with, you know, chase him around like that, attack the knight. That seems okay. Yeah, he's gonna do that. Um, this is fine. Also, we can just double the rooks here. That might be better. And we might be getting pretty close to checkmate. I'll have to see. Um, all right. <clears throat> so this pawn. Uh, if we take and they take. Uh, it's just an attack. They could take here, be defended by that pawn. Um, if we take... Rook takes... Uh, Rook doesn't have any... Um, attacks as far as I can see. So we'll take, they take back. Probably move the knight or the rook after they take back here. Probably like here. I don't know. They can start taking my pawns if I'm not um, if I'm not too careful here. If I'm not careful enough. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, we can also get the king into the game. That's an option. But I think they'll take here. And then what's the play? Okay, they didn't take back. Um, they're guarding this square with two pieces. So the rook doesn't seem to be doing much. Um, we can fork their pawns. But we can't take this pawn, so you could just move his, um, his knight there. I can do this, and the knight just takes. 17 minutes left. If I attack this pawn, they're just going to move here. Uh, moving these pawns doesn't seem to make any sense. We could just advance this pawn. Uh, we have plenty... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, <laughs> you just forget the obvious, don't you? Uh, all right, check. Opponent has plenty of moves, so I don't need to worry about stalemates yet. All right, how do we want to do this? Yeah, 
actually don't think we have a good continuation here. So let's just be safe. Yeah, this is fine. We can still, you know, keep picking off pawns if we have to. All right. In fact, I'm willing to just take that and take back if they want. Okay. And then we just need to find uh, find the right mate, and we'll be fine here. Um, could attack that pawn. They can't get back in time. It's probably fine. Now we want to just clear the debris of the field because we have the ladder mate. We just need to uh, be smart about it. Um, put the rook behind here. Just check the king. Seems fine. Okay. Let's move the rook all the way back. We'll move this rook up here. And uh, whoops. <laughs> all right. Um, my bad. All right. I need to move the rook out of the way, of course. We can check here. It's protected by that pawn. All right. Can we ladder mate? Um, not quite yet, but it's close. Because I have to do this move. Um. Or I could do this move, I suppose. Either way, I need this rook needs to go here. So it's going to be a sloppy mate, but it'll be a mate nonetheless. Um, that doesn't do anything. Let's see how long our opponent wants to take this. Um, this is fine. Let's see, if I move here, he still has this move and this move. Otherwise, I can just do this. It's not the prettiest mate in the world, but at this level, at my level, I'm just trying to not screw up. And that's going to be it. All right, so pretty good game. Let's um, check the analysis. All right, we're back. Uh, so this is a little bit after the game. I decided I wanted to do a little bit more of an in-depth analysis because uh, I missed some things and I know in my analysis originally I went pretty fast through it so maybe an in-depth one is a little bit better, a little bit more entertaining, um, educational, I don't know. Uh, even though this is a pretty open and shut game, you know, I got uh, it's considered smooth, and I was never in t too big of trouble. Um, I made one big mistake here that dropped me four points in evaluation, but I was never in real danger of losing. But I still thought there might be some worth in going over it. So we have the Philidor, which is yeah, e4, e5, knight f3, d6 and this is a fairly popular opening it's the third most uh, popular opening uh, it's not nearly as popular as knight c6 or knight f6 but it's still a you know it's solid i wouldn't play it 
I personally don't like moving two pawns uh, early in the game. I don't know why. Um, but I played a little bit off book, and I had one sentence of notes in my uh, opening repertoire document, and that was just to play d4, and I totally didn't do that. And I think this was perfectly fine. Obviously, analysis doesn't have anything against bc4, but I think in the future, I want to play openings or respond to openings in the manner in which I'm most comfortable with. So I play the Italian game. I want to get e4, knight f3, bc4, you know, work on that f7 square, open up the queen eventually if the knight gets to move here. Uh, Got to move the d-pawn first. But, you know, if you know the Italian, there's it's uh, pretty cut and dry what your aims are, unless you get into Joko Piano. But... Looking here, we have h6, which is barely played, and for a good reason. So this is kind of an anti-fried liver move. And I don't believe I can fry the liver here. Let's say he plays this. So I can't fry the liver yet. And the reason of that is because I haven't moved my d-pawn. So my dark square bishop isn't looking over this diagonal, so I can't move my knight to g5. And that's kind of the danger zone for the Italian, because then you are focusing on the f7 square, and your queen can follow up any threats as well. So that's kind of the point. Uh, and h6, already weakening the king's position, although the king hasn't, uh, hasn't castled yet. Uh, it's not really a great move. It's not doing much. It's kind of a passing move. It gives white another tempo. So I responded with d4. And again, a6. Not sure what my opponent's doing with that. I don't know if it's a uh, troll opening. <laughs> it's not the bond cloud, so I don't know the point of that. Um... And then I finally take on e5, which is what I should have done. Opponent doesn't take back and goes to b5. And as you can see, this is a big mistake. But I missed my uh, opportunity here. and went from plus 5 to plus 3.6, which is not a huge deal. But you can probably see it if you are looking in this direction. But I did have the, I think it's the Greek gift of bxf7 and why do i have that is it because of knight g5 no because they take with their h pawn i have this because my queen is open now i can check again and the game is uh not doing well for black here yeah it's considered a great move in the position. So it's definitely something I need to learn. You know, the uh, the F7 attack, when I can play it, when I can't play it. But I think it's a pretty good indicator if my opponent is um, giving up to tempo early for some nonsensical pawn moves. I think uh, I do need to look to attack more. But anyways, this is what I played. Not a big deal. Not a horrible move. Uh, opponent finds a good pawn move, or a good bishop move here. Um, so I was wondering if it is okay to exchange here. And the problem is, I'm trapped. So you can see I can't move here, here, or here. I can move here. I can move to d5. So I wonder if that was better because I'm attacking this rook and maybe prompting a knight move which, if the knight blocks, that's ineffective, because I can just take this way. Uh, pawn moves, I'll probably um, exchange anyway. In that case, I've goaded my opponent in making another pawn move. We got a backwards pawn here, so that's good. But let's go ahead and check and see what they wanted out of us. No, BXE6 was correct. So is this move even good? No, Eval is going down. 
Oh, it's still an excellent move, but as you can see, it's almost two points worse. It's 1.79 points worse than the other option. And they want to take here. Well, I'd have to wait a while for the depth to get to a high enough point to where we could see what the actual line is. But that's interesting. That's something I wanted to learn after watching back the video is what was the better move. So I take, opponent takes. Okay, this was an inaccuracy. They would have rathered me move up this night. And I think I was obsessed with this concept of, I don't know, I'm not sure why I did that. Oh, I think I did that because I didn't want to, I wanted to undouble my pawns. But I'm basically exchanging pawns here, which a center pawn for a flank pawn isn't the greatest thing in the world, uh, with nothing else considered. Um, although, the engine here wants to take with the bishop, and that makes perfect sense because black has not developed anything. They've just moved pawns. Uh, yeah, they have no development other than a bishop that they exchanged, or I exchanged off the board. So that makes sense. They want to get that bishop out. But they take with the pawn. Uh, like I said in my original video, uh, I was a little unsure of what to do at this point. I'm not sure if I looked at knight to d5. I think it's because, you know, I was obsessed with the idea of the queen on this long, you know, facing off with the other queen. Now we have a half open file. I can try to goad my opponent into this maneuver so I can take their queen and then take back with the knight. Um, just forcing my opponent, you know, getting him out of the ability to castle. And I'm up a pawn. I'm definitely up positionally so exchanging queens makes a lot of sense here so knight c3 is an inaccuracy but it's you know it's it's okay um we wanted ft4 out of this situation though um this move here takes more space in the center uh all that good stuff so again um ineffective flank pawn moves is pretty silly. That pawn is ripe for the picking now. Uh, opponent's going to need to move the knight to babysit it. It's not great. Or make another pawn move and really overextend. Okay, retreated to the right square. I don't think there was another square for me. No, so. Uh, I could move here. I could move on the rim. Uh, how much worse is that? Knight a4. Again, it's a principle. Knights on the rim are grim or dim. Uh, that doesn't mean, you know, 94 is excellent. So it is also, you know, those principles are also situational at times. All right, knight f6, finally getting some development going. Engine wanted this knight, but, you know, close enough. <laughs> e5 is best. Uh, again, I kind of have... My autopilot here, if I can fork a knight in something or a bishop in something, you know, a minor piece, I'm dictating either, get, you know, opponent giving up the pawn, actually exchanging with the bishop, um, or giving up, you know, giving up this knight, which would be pretty stupid. So they move their knight away. They actually wanted the exchange. And they were okay with uh, no castling. And it kind of shows the position we're in. Um, I just castle, which the engine doesn't like. Um, I kind of get it, the, you know, keep the foot, you know, foot on the pedal, but the rook is close enough to getting developed. Opponent gets the queen out. As you can see, they really didn't like that move. Um, if you've watched me, you know I'm very... I try not to get the queen out, you know, until later in the game. Until I can, you know, put an exclamation point on a game that I'm winning or tactics. Again, the F7 square leads to a lot of queen tactics. And, and of course, the queen is great at checkmating. And I had a miss win, and I don't think I understood this move. 
or understood why this move was so bad. So four points in the analysis. It's a minor piece and a pawn. What did they want me to do? They wanted d3. Maybe I was letting my opponent off the hook by exchanging queens, even though I am ahead. So here, knight d3, we have knight takes e5, knight takes e5, dx e5, and I can play a check here on g6, uh, which is not bad. Their queen is blocked off from defending. So that's certainly an option. And I still have this bishop if I want to apply more pressure. Let's get back to the game. Opponent takes. Considered a great move. That's interesting. So maybe there's a lesson to be learned here. Take back with the wrong knight. Okay. So I figured it with the knight on e2, it's developed, but it's not fully developed, you know? So I wanted to develop that knight. Um, but I guess this is the worst knight in the eyes of the uh, engine, the knight on f3. So something to study. It's not a big difference, of course, as you can see. And then dx e5. You didn't like it, and yeah, you just uh, you just take that. So I can you know exchange for this pawn if I want to. Actually, I can't. I'm beat down a rook, but I just took this because <clears throat> we're attacking this bishop and uh, this pawn. If the bishop moves away, which is what the pawn did, or the bishop did, uh, king should have moved here. For their own defense you know defend both pieces kings are a decent defender against one of uh you know the aggressors pieces um, they're especially good defenders in the in the uh, end game but this was a big mistake got to take that with check and then best move chasing the knight around but I got to attack their bishop a second time. And then I got to decide I did end up taking. So let's see if this is the best move. Um, other candidate moves. Uh, going back here to check the king doesn't make too much sense without any further study. No, I think that's best. All right. And I think in the video I talked about, or during the game, I talked about how um, I was trading a piece that works better in open spaces. The uh, bishop there, the game is wide open. Nobody, we have one center pawn. Uh, black is running out of pawns in general. So it is uh, perfectly good to exchange that. And then we just have a series of checks, if I remember correctly. Oh, I wanted to do, this is another point of me wondering if this was a good play or not, because I thought it was giving up tempo. Because b3, you know, fianchettoing, or fianchettoing, sorry. Uh, it's a two-move process, so I'm spending tempo to do this. Um, however, I don't see any great spaces for the bishop. So that's a dead... Excuse me, that's a dead bishop, that's a dead bishop, that's a dead bishop, and that's a dead bishop. So, um, it's the only way I could get my bishop developed, and that's kind of one of my goals in the opening. Or, I guess this is this is almost the end game at this point. We've lost so many pieces. And then e4, again, one move, one move chasing uh, moves here. It's just not... I mean, you are grabbing space, but it, it becomes a target. And so we have rook d4, yeah. And I just saw this right here. Now the pawn's going to fall, most likely. Uh, they can move their knight back here, but it's another threat. Anyway, I played this check instead. 
Uh, King F6. I should have moved back here. This is another weakness of mine of knowing, you know, which square is best here. Uh, it's not a big difference looking at the evaluation. Then I continued my Fianchetto. Fianchetto, I'm sorry. It's Fianchetto. And we have a sort of a skewer or x ray. I think it's considered an x ray because I'm attacking through this knight. Uh, could be wrong. And then opponent moves out of the way the incorrect way. So they could have saved their, their rook here. Just move that away. Uh, then there would be less of an attack here. Um, so. Yeah, king, uh, rook e8. Rook c8, rather. I don't think I have a knight attack here. Yeah, I guess I have knight b5, but they don't love it. Obviously, pawn can't take back, but there's not much I'm accomplishing here other than making you know the king move again. Uh, that's not what was played in game. I got another check and took the rook. Interesting, they they wanted rook d6. Uh, I guess I'm being a little more materialistic. Uh, as you can tell, I did the you know I used the ladder mate, and the ladder mate is the ultimate noob uh, noob way of winning. Uh, by checkmate. I don't know what the, like a white belt in jujitsu, what that equivalent is, whatever the first submission you learn or get good with, I don't know. King takes, a king in the middle of the board. I attack this rook now. And then they wanted me to move the rook over here, I guess to attack this knight, that makes sense. Um, and they just shove, oh, that's interesting. So they say to shove e3 at this point. So I don't even get to take the knight. Let me see here. So I've went away. No, they just moved the knight back. Okay. That doesn't seem very uh, productive. So I'm sure it is a better move for a reason. Um, and still learning, you know, how to evaluate these moves. Uh, opponent gives away a pawn here for some reason, but is considered the best move. I don't know if they're just out of moves. It does uh, It does get the the knight out here with a fork which my opponent missed I and mean, look at that we went from plus 8.67 to uh, down 21 now I couldn't really take advantage of this fork unless he wanted to give up a knight for two pawns uh, and actually can't move his knight if I well, I can't play rook to e1 because I just dropped my other rook uh, I'm supposed to play like rook d6. I don't know. Move. Uh, we have to retreat this rook somewhere on this file. But again, opponent missed that. And how long did I take to find this move? <laughs> it took me a minute to find this move. Uh, I know. That's part of uh, doing this on, you know, recording this and posting to YouTube. I'm trying to explain my moves, and uh, I I would hope I would have found this in like 10 seconds. But, of course, I have no confidence yet, so I would check and make sure BXE5 here was the... Uh, there was no tricks. There's no forks. There's a fork here. But I don't think that works. Let me see it really fast. It's excellent, not best. I mean, we're still up 22, so there's, it's going to be pretty hard. 
for uh, my opponent to recover with that kind of move. And then at this point, or maybe a few points uh, after this, I just wanted to trade down material, to be honest. I wanted to get my rooks out of the way and then just gobble up this knight. Uh, and we're up to 58 on the evaluation. I wonder if I missed like a mate in 10 or something. You know, at this point. So we trade off minor pieces. And yeah, up 13 in material. Not too much to talk about, just want to make sure I didn't have any stalemating chances. Okay. We had mate in 7, which I definitely missed. If I was playing blitz, if I was super low on time, then I need to see mate in 7s. Well, mate in 4s, mate in 3s. Maybe that's more my speed, but... We take. Nothing wrong with that. And at this point, it's just about setting up the ladder mate. Don't give up any pieces. I think the biggest part for me here is to make sure my opponent has legal moves. So right now, my opponent can't move here. Can't move his queen. King here, rather. He can move this pawn. He can move his king here or here. So what I'm trying to do is not get stale, you know, not uh, force a stalemate. But rook can move here, of course. I care nothing about that pawn. I think I said oops when I uh, did this move, but honestly, it doesn't matter. We've got our two rooks. Uh, throw in another check. Uh, I could have taken here. Would have uh, slowed thing, you know, sped up things. But I still have 15 minutes left. I don't know if I'll ever get to playing 15-10. Um, I like talking through my moves too much. And I don't know how well the videos would turn out at 15-10. Still played a pretty fast game. But that's because, you know, my opponent was off their game, you know. They were higher than me in Eva, in uh, ELO, so they're definitely a good player for my, uh, they're in my league and a little bit better than me. So, yeah, at this point, it's just the ladder mate. Uh, make the king move to one, to one side of the board and then do that. So, um, yeah, pretty easy game. But we have to take those, you know, we can't give those away. And even in this game, I made, you know, a four-point mistake. If I made another four-point mistake, he'd be winning. He or she would be, well, main man legends, probably he. But yeah, I could have made two stupid moves, and he would have been ahead on evaluation. So uh, there's definitely places to, you know, things to work on, but definitely, you know, take the win. And I guess I missed Maiden too, so I'll have to do lessons on that. Um, I've been doing lessons, I think I've shown this before, but at the moment I'm doing this essential checkmate pattern, um, which unfortunately it's only really good for uh, people on diamond memberships because every one of these little puzzles counts as a lesson and unless you have diamond you have x amount of lessons i think it's five on platinum on the second highest i could be wrong but there are 130 of these so it take a long time to get through these lessons so if you want um if you just want to grab a diamond membership for a month or something and do this I would recommend doing this of course you can find I'm sure you could find this all in a book and maybe you could find it online for free uh, YouTube is a wonderful place but anyway hope you enjoyed this hopefully this more in-depth analysis I just didn't like leaving the video with such a you know 
such a shallow analysis of the game. So, um, well, until next time, I'll be trying to get videos out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but uh, we'll see. Whenever I make plans, something happens and they go away. So, all right. Have a good one, guys and gals. Thank you.